In this video, we're going to learn more about how to interpret confidence intervals and how to word conclusions after we've created a confidence interval. We're also going to learn more about how to find the critical Z scores. So to begin, just to summarize some information about confidence intervals. So confidence intervals are always constructed using a confidence level or level of confidence. From that level of confidence and the sample statistic, we create a range of values or an interval. And recall that interval for us when we're looking at proportions is p hat plus or minus margin of error, which we can further write p hat, the margin of error for us is a z star, again, based on a confidence level, times square root p hat, q hat, all over n. And then from there, how do we interpret this confidence interval? Well, this confidence interval gives us a description of where we can find the true population proportion. And so how is that confidence level included in that? Well, that confidence level is a certain percentage. That tells us what percentage of the time we can find our true population proportion in our interval. So if we carried out this experiment with 100 different samples and found 100 different population, rather sample proportions, then 95 of those intervals we created would contain that true population proportion. So let's look at that in the context of our example that we were just working out, looking at HR professionals and hiring. So for us, let's just recall our sample proportion p hat was equal to 0.48. And we constructed a confidence interval at 95% confidence of 64.04% to 49.96%. Now, if we rounded, that would be between 46% to 50%. So here is our confidence interval created with 95% confidence. So how do we interpret this? Well, this means we are 95% confident P, the population proportion, falls in this range. And so again, I'll just repeat, that means that if we did the same experiment 100 times, I'm gonna write this out because it's so important. So if repeated 100 times, so that means we have a bunch of P hats, P hat sub one, P hat sub two. We had a bunch of P hats, say 100. And from them, we each created all of these confidence intervals. Here's one, maybe here's another one. Here's another one, bunch of confidence intervals. We would expect 95 of them to contain P, the true population proportion. So it might be that some of them don't. In fact, we'd expect about five of these intervals not to include P. Okay, so let's look now at example three. And we're gonna look at some statements and determine if we're able to conclude those statements based on our work. So the first statement says, 48% of all HR professionals use social networking sites to research job applicants. So we're being told a statement about 
the entire population of all HR professionals. So that means what we're saying here in this sentence is that P is equal to 48%. Now, do we know that? We do know P hat is equal to 0.48, but we are not able to conclude for certain what the population proportion is. So we're gonna say no, P hat is not usually equal to P. Usually it's a good approximation, but we can't say that it's for sure equal to that population proportion. So the next statement says, is it probably true that 48% of all professionals use social networking sites to research their job applicants? Well, we know that 95% of the intervals we would make would capture that true proportion. But even the interval that we made up here with 95% confidence, it does include that number, 48%. But there are a lot of other numbers in our interval that our population proportion could be. So it's not even likely true, or it's not probably true that our population proportion is 48, because there's a lot of different numbers that our population proportion could be. And we'll see in the coming statements of how we can actually interpret this confidence interval. So is it probably true that exactly 48% of HR professionals use social networking sites? No. Part C says, we don't know exactly what proportion of all HR professionals use social networking sites to reach job applicants, but we know that it's between 46 and 50%. So this also is not true. We only know that, or rather we are only 95% confident. That P is between the percentages we computed. So there's a chance that that population proportion isn't even in our interval. D says, we don't know exactly what proportion of all HR professionals use social networking sites to research job applicants, but it's probably between 46 and 50. So the issue with this sentence here is that probably is very vague. So we can't even say a statement like that. If we said that we don't know exactly what the, pro the pro proportion of all HR professionals use social networking sites, but we do know that 95% of the time it's going to be between here, that would give us a better indication. But here, this is too vague. Part E says, we are 95% confident that between 46% and 50% of all HR professionals use social networking sites to research job applicants. So if we unpack this sentence here, so here's that interval, that confidence interval that we created, 46 to 50%. And we're hypothesizing that 95% of the time, or we are 95% confident that all HR professionals who use social networking sites to research job applicants falls in that range. So this amount, this what we're describing here, percentage of all HR professionals, that is our p-value. So what this sentence is saying is that we are 95% confident that p will land in this range. And this is in fact a true statement that we can conclude. So it's not saying that we are guaranteed to have or find P hat in this range, but it's saying that 95% of the time, or we are 95% confident that we will. So at this time, I encourage you to pause the video and go over these statements again, and make sure you feel comfortable about what we can and cannot conclude about a confidence interval. And when you're, when you're ready, we are gonna to continue to the next page where we're gonna look at example four, 
and go over how to compute those critical z-scores for various confidence intervals. So here we're told to identify the critical z-scores for 99% confidence, 95% confident, 90% confident, and 80% confident. So I will say these will be helpful throughout this chapter. So it's gonna be really important to come back to this page and reference this page throughout uh, your remaining work for this week. So let's first look together at computing the critical Z-score for 99% confidence. So let's first draw the image that we should have here for such an interval. So always we're gonna use N01, that standard normal curve to find those Z star values. So if we have our sample distribution here, or rather our standard normal distribution, not necessarily coming from a sample, zero is in the middle. So what we wanna to do to find Z star is to find the cutoffs where we can find, oops, bouncing around here, the cutoff values between which we can find 0.99 or 99% of the area under the curve. So what does that mean then about how much we should be able to find in our tails? Well, total in our tails should be 0.01. That's how much we're missing from that center. So in each tail, we should find half of that. So in one of these tails here, we should find 0.0. 0, 0.05. So we can use this information in our GeoGebra to determine that value. So I encourage you to follow along the video and find that value with me. So we're going to go over to our GeoGebra calculator. And we're set up here to look at a right tail. So we can just select the right tail and we're gonna put in 0 0.005. And that number that we get out here, 2.57583, that's gonna be our Z star value. And for us, we'll just round to four decimal places. So we're gonna copy that on our notes. So Z star for us, I'll even label it here. is equal to 2.5758. Awesome, let's continue for our next Z star value. So similarly, I'm gonna draw my N01 curve, standard normal. Center is gonna be at zero. I now wanna find where the middle 95% of the area lands. So for us, what's how many, how, how much area is in the tails? Well, to do that, one represents the area total under the curve. So if I subtract 0.95, I get 0.05. That's not included in that middle range. But I have two tails that I need to include here. So that means I need to divide my 0 0.05 over two. And we see then we should be getting 0 0.025. So in one tail, I should have 0 0.025. So I encourage you to pause the video and find that Z star on your own and then continue watching and we can find it together. So when you're ready, we'll go over to our GeoGebra we will change this previous setting to 0 0.025. The number we get, 1.95996, and we'll round to four decimal places. So for us, our Z star is gonna be two, oops, rather, 1.96. And we can just stop at 1.96 because if we rounded, if we cut off to four decimal places and round, well, the six rounds up, making this nine round up, making this nine round up, making our five round up to six. 
So keeping four decimal places actually just truncates it to 1.96. And so I'm using Z star to represent that cutoff for each case. But as we see here, Z star changes depending on what that confidence level is. So now we just have two more to fill out. So I encourage you to pause the video and work out these Z stars on your own. Give yourself some time to draw these pictures, use your GeoGebra, and then when you're ready, continue watching. So here again is our standard, standard normal. Zero is in the center. We now want 90% confidence. So we have 0 0.90 here. So how much is not in between our cutoffs? Well, that would be one minus the 0 0.90, which would be 0 0.1. But we wanna compute how much is in each tail. So divide that by two gives us 0 0.05 in each tail. So just one tail would be 0.05. So going over to GeoGebra, we can input 0.05 for that upper tail and we get 1.64485. So rounding to four decimal places would just be 1.6449. So copy that in our notes. And then our final situation here, so 80% confidence. So drawing our setup here, wanna know where 80% of the data lands or where 80% of the area is under our curve. So what is outside our curve? Well, one minus 0.8, which is 0.2. I'm gonna take that 0.2 divided by my two tails which would be 0 0.1 per tail. So my picture isn't really getting to scale here, but as long as we label, then we will be able to follow our work. So we need 0 0.1 on the right side here. That is a one, not a seven. You know, it kind of looks like a seven, here we go. So now we consult our GeoGebra. Look at where our tail is 0.1. The cutoff is 1.28155. So rounding would be 1.2816. So let's go ahead and copy that for our notes. So our Z star value in this case is 1.2816. So again, you will wanna to refer to this page when you're doing work in this, in our class because these Z star values will come in handy and you'll need them when you're computing confidence intervals for various confidence levels.